Thank you very much, Missionero, Missionary Miguel Bermudez Marin. May God continue blessing you greatly. And everyone who is there in Guatemala, with the congregation pastored by the Reverend Eduardo Cubur, may God bless you all greatly and take greetings to your congregation from there, from Guatemala to everyone who is international and also to all the congregation there in Guatemala and everyone who is seeing us through the satellite or internet on this occasion may God opens our understanding today and the scripture to us to comprehend everything that will be spoken in this morning in this small study and also with the message we have for today the mystery of the foolish virgins and the wise virgins let us read in Romans chapter 8 he used the scripture where it tells us about the uh, virgins of Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. It tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, the they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to, the, to live after the flesh, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. The subject we have for today, the mystery of the foolish virgins and the wise virgins. You may please be seated. In a notebook, he wrote down, so that we can go on seeing these groups. And he writes down, the wise virgins equals the bride written in the Lamb's Book of Life since before the foundation of the world, the believers in Christ, born again, whom enter, are born in the kingdom or to the kingdom of God as kings and priests and judges. They are born as sons and daughters of God. These are the saints of the high, the Most High who receive the kingdom of God. They are the wise virgins, the, wise, the foolish virgins, he says, the wise, the foolish virgins, he wrote down Matthew 25, 1 to 13, Revelation 7, 8 to 1, and 7, and also 12, 17 of Revelation. He says, the foolish virgin, <clears throat> which are the people who believed in Christ, but they were not born from the Holy Spirit, which is the oil. These people will not be in the Millennial Kingdom. After the Millennial Kingdom, they will rise to be judged and to enter to live in to eternity in the Kingdom of God. 
However, they will not be kings and priests or judges. There will only be a people with eternal life. Those are the foolish virgins, the sleeping virgins. And he also says, which are the non-believers, he puts, the future of the sinners who did not receive Christ and did, did not belong to the foolish virgin and much less to the wise virgin, they will be judged, condemned, and cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death where they will cease to exist. They will be killed. Annihilated. He tells us in the message, come and see, preach on January 31st of 1975. He says, the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. And I want to make this clear, this word foolish sounds a bit ugly, right? The prophet handly, handle, ha hardly ever used it. He's speaking about Brother Branham, or never used it. He says, sleeping virgins. I was looking up that word foolish because it is the word that has been applied the most to this group of virgins. Both groups are virgins. They are in the kingdom of heaven. They are in the kingdom of heaven. He tells us on page 40 of the book of quotations, Paragraph 326. Each age supported the true vine of, of Christ, the wise virgin, and each age supported the foolish, foolish virgin. He says the two vineyards in each age. He continues to say, in the kingdom of heaven, not in the kingdom of God, and of the devil. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto ten virgins. See? All ten are God. They belong to the kingdom of God. But five are wise, and five are sleeping virgins. I look up that word fatwa, or foolish, in a dictionary, and then what that word says, a meaning of foolish, and an, another meaning is fool. Fools. So they are actually foolish virgins, silly virgins. Why? Because when they heard the message, instead of holding on to the word, even if no one else believed it and received it, they began to wait for so and so or such and such a person. If he says amen to that, I'll say amen. That is being silly. Because when you see that it is the word, you should not count on anyone to see whether they believe it or not. The only thing you can do is what the children of God always do. Say Amen to the Word. And he tells us on page 69 of the book of quotations. This is a book in Spanish. Paragraph 600. It says, now, there were two of the people who went to Sodom and preached to Lot. That was the foolish virgin, the sleeping virgin, the nomination, a representation of them. He said, Lot equals the foolish virgins. Blessed are those that did not see and believe. The second quote that we have here. Preach on January 12, 1975, in Ponce. It says, from among the small group that loved the Lord for, because he was not present when he should have been, one of them was filled with unbelief. The devil filled him with unbelief. See how important it is to be where the whole people of the Lord is? Notice in these tremendous days of so much unbelief, see how important it is for everyone to be together? So, we see that when we are all together, the Lord appears to us, revealing His Word to us, speaking to our hearts, showing us the things which, must, which we must see at this time. In the book of the seals, the revelation of the seven seals, on page 84,
Page 86 of the book in Spanish. It says, can, can you imagine Peter, James, and John and the rest in the upper room saying, now we indeed have the Holy Spirit. It is better that we still keep still. Oh, it's a question, but maybe we better just keep still. Brother, through window, doors, and everything, they went. They went out on, on, onto the street, acting like a bunch of drunks. That's the real, real Holy Ghost. But you see that sleeping bridges ain't receiving nothing anyhow. That's right. And remember what they went to buy, to try to buy oil. Remember the scripture doesn't say they got it. But while they were out trying to buy it, they come, a sound. What happened? All those virgins that slept rose and trimmed their lamps and went in to the supper. Is that right? And the rest was left for the tribulation period, right? Weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. That's the church, not the bride, the church. The bride went in. There is a whole difference between the church and the bride. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Went in to the wedding supper. He wrote down there, foolish. He continues to say on page 3, So we see that Thomas was not there when he was supposed to be, and the Lord had already revealed himself to them quite a few times. Because he was not present, he was full of unbelief over there. And when he heard about what they had seen and heard regarding the Lord revealing himself to them again, Thomas, one of the eleven, noticed, out of twelve, eleven were left. Out of eleven, one of them was filled with unbelief. So, we see the picture of that time. And we, by knowing that we are back in that per period of time of waiting the fullness of God, just as they were waiting for the Holy Spirit, so we see that if any brother, even from among the elect, is careless, stop having fellowship with one another, and of being present where he is supposed to be, then, instead of being filled with faith, what is he filled with? Unbelief. And on page 47, of the book of quotations, Paragraph 405, it says, The reason Eve was deceived, she never kept the whole word of God. Satan quoted to her, but never told her the whole truth, neither her denomination. But he but he stayed long enough to get part of the word and did not take the whole word. And that's what the matter today. The sleeping virgin, this is the foolish, long enough, the sleeping virgin stayed long enough to get part of the word, but not all the word. The deceived church stayed long enough to get part of the word, but not all the word. And they were sincere and honest about it. He wrote down the foolish and the Eve. He continues to say, then on page 3, on the middle of it, then what happened? When he hears about what God has done, when he hears about the Lord revealing himself among his people, of how he is revealing himself, oh, if I don't see, I don't believe. If I don't see, I don't believe. So in the message, making a service to God outside of His will, more or less, He tells us, as Thomas, on page 22 of the book in Spanish, as Thomas, he was almost the last one in seeing the Lord. But he had to see Him to be able to believe Him. When they saw, that is, he had to see Jesus to be able to believe. 
And that is the same thing that would be happening now. Happening now, what is happening? Some people don't believe the word being manifested, and they have to see him physically to believe. When he comes in the resurrection, then th those 30 to 40 days, and then we'll be in the marriage supper of the Lamb. But for that time, it was they will be told as Thomas that he had to see Jesus put his finger here and don't be un an unbeliever. And that is how it is in our time. This is the message trying to do God a service without being the will of God. Now when they see the things is pre predicted, Oh, Thomas, come, but he was a little late. Now, when they see the things that re predicted and saying, thus say the Lord, happens, then they say, give us some of your oil. See? When they see the fulfillment of the tent vision and see all those marbles, there they will come and asking from the oil to also obtain the rapture or transformation. But that, at that time, it's too late for that person who comes to get that rapture in faith to leave with those that have raised or risen and are here, the wise ones, who are ready for the rapture. For that time then, that opportunity will not be available. But then, so by chance of, or after hearing so much talk about the Lord having risen and appeared a few times already, then Thomas was in one of the services of the disciples. Notice Thomas, someone from among the people who turned away. He had turned away in the midst of that difficult time. And now when he comes back again, he returns full of unbelief. So when he returned, well, he was there, but full of unbelief. But do you know that Thomas represents, typifies the foolish virgins? Do you know that the prophet says that when the foolish virgins see among the elect in the midst of the bride, the genuine bride, three laughter? Now remember, Thomas was one of the members of the group. He was there with them. He was one of the eleven. He had seen God manifested in flesh. He knew that he was the Messiah. Oh, this brings in the foolish virgins among us. Oh, this brings... This also brings in the foolish virgins, understanding and knowing God manifested in flesh. This brings, is that, that, this brings in that group. Although they belong to God, they are not lost. But He brings them in among the elect. See, they have believed the message of the cornerstone and received His coming, but it's up to there. But when the Lord reveals Himself and they hear about the revelation of the Lord among His people, they cannot believe unless they see and touch. And if one begins to speak against it, then this, there is where the reason for any name to be blotted out comes. Because by speaking against something they don't understand, while it is the truth, that is when blasphemy comes against the Holy Spirit. That is why when one doesn't understand something, one shuts his mouth. And that is that makes it better. What I have been doing throughout all this month, if you don't understand something, shut your mouth. God will be opening your understanding gradually. He says a scripture, many words, he said that many words, something like that, the scripture says something like that. So it is better, uh, notice the recommendation he, he gives us to shut our mouth. And you do it better. Doesn't the Bible say that in multitude of words there are always sin? That is the part. And one of the greatest sins would be the greatest of all. Blasphemy, the Holy Spirit. If you find the scripture, there, in the Bible, I 
but there you please put it on the, the Bible so you can I can quote it to you and you can have it. And on page on this same page 47 paragraph 407 it says now the sleeping virgin lost her place we do know that she goes up to the judgment and if she has never heard the truth she is condemned that's correct you will never find Jesus in anywhere unless where he where he left him you leave him at. Judas could come up. Remember the sleeping virgins, you say. Could be inspired by the devil? Absolutely. Still living clean? Yes, sir. Judas did. And on page 23, where we stop, on 22 on the bottom, page 23 of uh, the message, let's continue here in the scripture. But now notice the influence. Sometimes important people will gather together and you hear them say, the great such and, and the great such and, our great never do that. There is no great among us. There is only one great one, and that's God. We are brothers, sisters. I don't care if you're pastoring a church that's got five people in it. That don't make you little. That makes you a brother. See? If you are true to, the, to God's Word, don't care what, how, you don't get little. God don't have little children and big children. He just has children. They are all say the same. On page four at the bottom. So we we can see that even if he is written there, anyone can be blotted out if he commits that fault. That is on the fault of blasphemy. I cannot tell you that you are of the wise or of the foolish. When we say foolish, people always get scared. And that, no. When we say foolish, that means means you are a part of the... Uh, of the you are part of, of uh, the group of the virgins. They are all virgins. In Proverbs 10, 19. He says, they are all virgins, but they are not in the section of the elect for the rapture, and they will have to spend a few days, a few more days here after the elect leave, but they will gladly die for what they have believed, and they will be there too, or also on that great day after the millennium. And on page 46, paragraph 398, it says, Sodom was here, and Lot was in Sodom. And two angels went there and preached to them, and they brought that small group, sleeping virgin, out. He wrote down the foolish virgins are brought out by the angel, Moses and Elisha. Michael and Gabriel. And also on page 135 of this same book of quotations, Paragraph 
paragraph 1205, it says, See, the Gentile church is in heaven, and the foolish virgin will not be saved during that time. She has already been saved, but she has been rejected in the bride. And she only goes through the period of the tribulation for the purifying time because she has rejected Christ, the Word, for her purific purific purification. He wrote down, the foolish reject Christ. And in 439, paragraph 439, on page 51 of the book of quotations, it says, Now in Revelation 15, the remnant of the seed of the woman, which were the saints of the tribulation, who went through the tribulation, they were found standing on the sea, that is on the outer court. He wrote down out of court. And it was full with fire, blood, red flames. They had obtained the victory upon the beast, beast, Rome, upon his number, upon the letter of his name and upon his image. The confederation of, they came out of the confederations of churches. And by the preaching of Moses and Elijah, those two prophets who will appear to Israel to bring out this group of people, the saints of the period of the tri tribulation, at this time world, they will be brought inside. See, the church is raptured already. Can you see it? They are already in glory. And here are the saints of the tribulation, the sanctified ones whom be my fault and theirs, they have never heard the word. If they would have heard it and rejected it, they, went for, they would go on to hell. They would have been thrown outside the darkness, the dark darkness. But if they have never heard it, God is just. Tribulation period comes to them. There he speaks about the denomination. And he wrote down, the church and the 144,000 Jews. And also he writes, the foolish and Moses. He continues to say, God is going to allow us all to see to which group we belong to. And He will make it known to us in such a simple way that everyone will hold on tight to the Word. Do you think that, for example, if I knew that I had to go through the tribulation, do you think I would leave the message? Do you think I would get discouraged? That is when I need to build up more courage because I know that awaits me is quite hard and I have to feed myself well with that word and I have to straighten myself well. And if I used to arrive late to the services, well, not anymore. Now I have to be better prepared so that when preaching is happening, I can catch it all. And if I used to read one book a month and when the new new book would come, come out, I still haven't finished one. Now, what what's going on? Why haven't they bought, brought me that, the other book? If they say it hasn't come out yet, well, I read another one of the books I already read. Why store up the word here to get ready? Because the day ahead are evil. Book of Quotations, paragraph 868. It says, they did not know it until the day they entered into the ark. And then it was too late. The foolish virgins did not know until they returned and saw that the wise virgin had already left. Then they stayed to confront the tribulation period. He wrote down the virgin, the foolish virgin. 
page 6 on top of it says, so this will not take my courage away. I will get, I will better prepare to say, so that my name is not blotted out. And if one has children, and if one has children, then one must be more prepared to be willing to even let his children starve to death, but not let his name be blotted out of there. In the book of the seals, the revelation of the seven seals, on page 261 and 262 it says we see this with more detail we will see this with more detail tomorrow or Saturday when we study the plague that will go by it will be like in Egypt he gave them time to repent he gave them time to repent God always sends an, a warning God is a just God, and He always alerts the people. He has always done it, all the time. He alerts the people for, him, for them to live, to obtain the blessing. We will see with these more details tomorrow or Saturday when we study the plagues that will go by like he gave Egypt. He gave Egypt place to repent. And what was the last plague? Was death. That's the last pl plague that hit the Pentecostal church. is spiritual death. She is dead. That's in the name of the Lord. She is spiritually dead. He gave her a place to repent, and she rejected it, and now she's dead. She'll never rise again. And he wrote down the plagues, and he also wrote down the last plague upon the church was death. The last plague, spiritual death. And then, people out there trying to bring an Episcopalian and priest and so forth and calling them Holy Father so and so. Why they ought to be ashamed of themselves? How blind can man get? Don't Jesus say, when that sleeping virgin came to buy oil, she did not get it? Everybody, you hear people say, I got the Holy Ghost. I spoke in tongues. But they don't want to come around a church like this. Oh, you know, I don't, I don't believe I want to go, to go around a place like that. And they say they got the Holy Ghost. But you want your dignified way. You want to stay in Babylon and still enjoy the blessings of heaven. You have to make your choice. You can't stay out there in the world and serve God at the same time. Jesus said you couldn't serve God and Mamun. So if you won't expect, expect. So if you really get saved, you'll enjoy meeting where the Holy Spirit is vindicating itself and showing that the Word of God is so. And this message, we read already this part here, which speaks of the last plague that fell in Egypt in the message discerning the body of the Lord. Brother Branham says on a little part here, we cannot discern by what the people think, nor what the intellectuals will tell us, nor by the psychologists will tell us. We should let ourselves be guided for what God says. Not by, bread, not by bread alone shall man live, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. Not discerning the Lord's body, many are weakly and sick, many are asleep, dead, spiritually dead. The last plague that hit Egypt was death. The last plague that hit 
the church is spiritual death. What we need today is a spiritual awakening, a spiritual awakening to discern discernment. We need a spiritual awakening to discernment. And also the last plague that hit Egypt was death. That's what he wrote. The, one, the last one that hit the church is spiritual death. He wrote down there, our brother William wrote down. He continues to say on the message, come and see. Preach on January 31st of 1975, he says. The prophet says that they will see. But he says that when they see the things that were promised to be done with, thus saith the Lord, then they will recognize it. See? He's speaking about uh, foolish. Now, we know, we do know that this will happen. And things always happen or begin somewhere. Hopefully, this part also starts here in Puerto Rico. And I do believe that this is what is happening in these last months. I have already, already given you this prophecy of how an elect is going to know that he's an elect. And a foolish will also know that he or she is a foolish by the attitude that you assume before the word. Search yourself there and you will know to which group you belong to. And as what Brother William would say, it's as simple as that. The attitude yeah, that you have taken before the word. Now we know that this will happen and things always happen or begin somewhere. Hopefully this part also begins in Puerto Rico. We would also be blessed by all these things starting here. May both groups recognize their position and may both groups recognize one another. And both groups stand hand in hand one with the other. Because this doesn't mean that because some belong to the group of the wise, to the foolish birds and the other, and to the other group, that doesn't mean they're going to put on their boxing gloves and be speaking one against the other. No. This is that those two groups are virgin. They belong to the kingdom of God. And what he says there is that we should work in harmony by knowing already in which group you are found. But do remember that from that section, your name could be blotted out if you enter into blasphemy against the Holy Spirit or ghost. He told me once, Benji, there will be people who are going to be walking like dress with death. I don't understand that. On page 46, paragraph 391, I will say those that say they are Jews or Christian and are not but they lie behold I will make them come and worship before you feet and know that I have loved you that could make me speak here about the subject of this morning's message. That is the virgin sleeping right there. Can you see it? Where was it? At the end of time. And he wrote down, The foolish will worship before the feet of the bride at the end time. At the end time. Our brother William wrote down there. He continues to say on page 7, the call to come up, preached on September 9th of 2012 here in Calle, is, our brother William says, Therefore, at the last day, those who will be, 
will come up will be blessed because they will be hearing. Thus saith the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of His church and in His church at the last day, in the golden age of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And He will be giving them the faith, the revelation to be changed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. There is where the seventh seal will also be revealed, opened to the believers in Christ. He tells us in the book of the Revelation of the Seven Seals on page 227 of the book in Spanish it says notice here this is where the good is and do not harm the wine or the oil. There is just a little bit left. Do not harm it. Now the oil is a symbol of the Holy Ghost. Here you have a few biblical quotes for that. Leviticus 8.11 where it says about the unction of Aaron, he wrote down high priest, with oil. Zechariah 4.12 of all coming, pouring through the pipes, and said Moses, and he wrote down Moses and Elijah, and said, This is my spirit, oil. Another, another thing you want to see, Matthew 14:25, there was a foolish virgin, or 25:3. The foolish virgin had no oil, no spirit, and Matthew 25:4, the wife. Virgin had oil in her lamp. He rolled down the two olive trees. Spirit filled spirit. Spirit. The o the the oil typifies the spirit. O o glory. Now he also tells us in the message the seal of God. On page twelve. At the bottom he says. I was preaching a few days ago from the subject of uh, offering the sacrifice of blood. Babylon is mentioned in Genesis at the beginning of the Bible. Babylon is mentioned in the center of the Bible. And Babylon is mentioned at the last of the Bible. It begins in Genesis and comes up to Revelation. Everything begins on two spirit. He wrote down two spirit. Notice, let us take this for a few min minutes. Even in the ark, there was the dove and the crow in the ark. There, one, both of them, birds, both of them could fly, both of them. You know, the crow is a hypocrite. He is. He's just a dirty hypocrite. Now, a crow can sit down over the old, an old dead horse and just eat and cow, and cow and flop his wings and have a big time. That poor little dove can't get near it. Why? It has not, he hasn't got any gall. See? He couldn't digest it. If it eat that, it would die. But the crow can sit there and eat dead horse half day. Go out in the field and come home and eat dinner with the, with wheat, with the crow, with the dust. He's an old hypocrite. It is all. Did you ever notice a dove has not gall of bitterness. Neither does any one that's baptized with the Holy Ghost. All the bitterness is gone away. They were both in the same ark, like the hypocrites and the real believers in the same church. Same, denomina same denomination sitting together. Same pew sitting together. I want you to notice another thing. Oh, I like to talk about nature. The dove, did you know you don't catch a dove taking a bath? Why? We don't have to. He's got an oil inside of him. And he wrote down the Holy Spirit. That goes out through his feathers and keep herself, himself clean all the time. That's the way a real, that's the way a real church is, church, real church. You don't have to be bathing up and going ba back about this, that, or that, the other. But they got an oil, holy oil, on the inside, every believer that keeps himself clean from the things of the world. Oh, if I, if, if we could just preach on the lamb and dove sometime, the Holy Ghost inside the believer keeps him clean. Not from the outside, what he washes off, but 
it comes from the inside out. Amen. A lot of people say, I have to go up and make confession today. I have to say so and so. I have to go make confession. I have, I have to do this. But you know, the Holy Spirit inside just work, works the oil out all the time. The atonement, keeping the believer clean. For there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, Romans 8.1. How do you, we get into it? By one handshake? No. By one paper? By one denomination? No. But by one Spirit, we all are baptized into one body. 1 Corinthians 12.13 Free from judgment, God doesn't judge that body. God judges it at Calvary, and He won't have to go to be judged anymore. There He's speaking about the elect, the wise virgin. He continues to say here on page 227 of the book of the Revelation of the Seventh Seal, where we stop, now He says, the wine symbolizes the stimulus of the revelation. I almost didn't begin to run. It is a thing that I didn't wake up all the, the neighbors when the Lord showed me this. It's the stimulus of the revelation. He wrote down oil. Holy Spirit, wine equals stimulus or stimulation of the revelation. Oil and wine in the Bible is associated together, always. I got the cork condensed and look, there is a string of them like, like that, where wine and oil goes together all the time. See, when the truth of the promised word of God has been truly revealed to his saints, that's filled with oil. oil. They'll, they'll get stimulated. Wine is a stimulation, glory. I feel, feel it right now. Stimulate it with joy. Shout, see? And when it does, it has, has the same effect upon them that the wine does upon a natural man. Because when the revelation has been given of a truth of God, and the true believer filled with oil, and the revelation is revealed, the stimulation becomes too great, too, so great that he makes him behave he, himself, himself, on normally. Right, glory. See, that's what the matter with them now. And on page 239, also tells us of this regarding the wine and the oil. And it says, last night, we were done with the expla explaining the wine and the oil and the effects that both produce. It might sound odd, but it was the true, the truth. We were seeing what the power of the wine was and how the oil represented the Spirit. I do suppose that you wrote it down. And if not, then it's in the tape. The oil always symbolizes the, the Spirit. As like the foolish virgins with no oil, wise virgins with oil, which is the Holy Spirit. And then on back, the prophets and so forth. And now, because I don't try to pull out every scripture in there, and there is things that you can't even speak about, take too much time. But I try to place out here, with scripture and so forth, just enough to give the people so you let them know and see the picture of it. But if you didn't sit down with one of them seals, why? My, you, you could take a month's sermons every night right on that seal and still not even touch it. See, one on one, on one of them. And that how much there is to it. But just is the, right, is the high spot of it. Now the oil symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Then we find out that the oil and the wine is connected in worship. See, always connected in worship. And the wine, I said, which come to me, that the wine symbolizes that it was the power of, it was the power of simulation by revelation, see? And that's when something has been revealed. It gives stimulation to the believer because it is presented by revelation. It's something that God has said, and he wrote down the second coming of the Lord. It's something God has said. 
it's a mystery. They can't understand it, see? And after a while, God comes down and reveals it and vindicates it. Remember, if the truth is revealed, the truth is also vindicated. And he wrote down, if the truth is revealed, it will also be vivified. Let me correct. It will also be vindicated. That is what he wrote down there. That is, it will be vindicated in the fulfillment of the tenth vision. And everything will be vindicated there. Yes. And let me continue on page 7 on the middle of it. And it is in that stage of the church where the vision of the 10th cathedral will also be fulfilled, which was shown to the Reverend William Branham. And there is where also the third pool will be fulfilled, which will be for the church bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will, of course, be for the wise virgin. This is in 1057 of the Book of Quotations, so you can write it down where Brother Abraham says that it is for those groups. For the wise virgins, it will also be for the foolish virgins, whom will go through the Great Tribulation. And it will also be for the world. On page 10a, which was the quote, that he wrote down to me on that occasion and I showed it to you once on a little book and he showed me this quote he told me to write down certain scriptures and notice what it says on 10a quote in the same minute in which that denominational world begins to receive this message that is exactly the hour of his coming when they, when the foolish virgins understood that they had, they did not have enough oil in their lamp, and when they came to knock at the door to obtain it, that's exactly when the bride left, when the wise virgins left. That's correct. They did not enter in. No, their organization will not be able to enter. They will not have the opportunity. At the moment in which the message is in circulation, the church would have left. And he wrote down, the wise, this is uh, in, in between lines, but by the little parts there, he says, the wise and the foolish and the rapture. And he also wrote down, when the denominational world begins to receive the message, Matthew twenty-five ten to 13. This is on page 7. In other words, that third pool will cover all of mankind. And therefore, it will also be for the Jews. And that is on page 464 of the book of the Revelation of the Seven Seals. Now, notice he blotted out their names from under heaven. But regarding the Gentiles in the time of the Holy Spirit, by sinning, by someone sinning against that, his name will be completely blotted out from the book of life. And then there is no forgiveness in this world nor in the one that is coming. Correct. There is where we are at. Israel is under the sacrifice of the lamb and goat. They had a place since they were here. But the two tribes were lacking, and they could never be included. When he calls the 144,000, they are still lacking. Correct? They're not even numbered. Joseph and Levi, they were put in their places. You can see it there clearly, and it makes hundreds and hundreds of years, we find that the promise of God. We find the promise of God. Now, what happened, they were purged during the terrible time of the tribulation. 
Now, if God goes to that virgin, which was a good woman, but she lacked to find oil in the, her lamp, he will purify her with persecution. Then, by the same reason, he puts these two tribes and purifies them during the time of the tribulation, because it is truly a time of purification, it is judgment. And he writes down, They do not have a specific quantity. And he also wrote down the two tribes go to the tribulation. The foolish virgin, virgin are the type. And he continues to say on the bottom, it is in the fulfillment of the tenth vision where the Holy Spirit will be speaking. And every believer in Christ will be there hearing the voice of Christ the voice of the angel of the covenant, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And it will be receiving the faith to be changed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Where will they be hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit? In the tent. And there will also be where the Jews will be hearing the voice of the angel of the covenant, the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit, making known all these things and doing all the things he said he will be doing in the fulfillment of the tenth vision. There is where the Jews will say, this is the one we are waiting for. This is what we have been waiting for. And on page 97 of the book of quotation, paragraph 838, and all of you are aware and know that there is symptom mysterious that is happening, and it is happening, and I know what it is now. I am not saying that. It's the grace of God that let me know what it is. It's something that is tremendous, and it is gone right now, and there is no way in the world for you to see it. And it's, but so help me, with this Bible in my hand, I know what it is. It's been told to you before. So, just don't try to put any interpretation. But just believe me as your brother. See, we're living in a great hour. See, we are living in a time where, where now you just be real, humble. Be a Christian. And mainly tonight, when that seal comes before you, and he wrote down the second coming of the Lord equals the seventh seal. See? Just don't try to interpret it. If you can understand it, this is that third pool. Or this is that third pool. And he wrote down, there is no way of seeing him. There is no way of seeing the seventh seal. But it will come before you. Seven seals, the third pool. All of that, on page 8, all of that will happen in the fulfillment of the third pool, where the Word, which is the sword of the Spirit, will be manifested in all of its fullness and will be making known all these things which must shortly come to pass and thus giving us the faith to be changed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb, opening the seventh seal to us and therefore giving us the faith to be changed. The seventh seal is the coming of the Lord, the second coming of the Lord. Let us stand up. 
so that we can leave with this subject that we have for today, the mystery of the foolish virgins and the wise virgins. May God bless us in this morning through this message and may help us all to be prepared for the glorious event of our transformation because that is what we all long for to be changed. We leave with, with us the subject of the Subject, the mystery of the foolish virgins and the white virgins. We live with us our appreciated brother and friend, Dr. William Soto Santiago.